so the CUV complex in a female body involves a clitoris, that's the C. Mm -hmm. The U is the urethral sponge, mm -hmm. and the V is the vagina. And it's now been seen and discovered that this is an entire unit. It's, it's not separate parts. Mm -hmm. They communicate, they work together. Mm -hmm. And so when you're touching, say, the glands of the clitoris, you are actually activating the urethral sponge and the deeper vagina mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's just that we don't have the interceptive awareness initially to feel that. But I can promise if you practice this breath and you do some mapping with your own finger or with your partner, you will develop that. And that is an extraordinary understanding of your erotic landscape. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. And is there anything else that you feel it just is getting missed? Like, you know, people just aren't thinking about, they aren't, you know, they aren't connecting to breath is one of them, knowing who you are. Uh yeah. kind of learning the anatomy as you're, as you're talking about. And really yes. Getting, you know. So say um, one of the ways that Aaron often speaks about the, the vagina and I actually agree with him. So in terms of like moving angles and all of that, the important thing to remember is the upper portion. We're going to call the upper portion, the part of the vagina closest to the belly and the lower mm -hmm. portion, the part closest to the back. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have a front and a back. Mm -hmm. So the upper portion tends to create a lot of arousal. So you have the urethral sponge, G-spot yeah. area, the yeah. A-spot, that whole uh, realm. The lower portion is the perennial sponge, which can kind of create um, more blood flow as well and more relaxation. Mm -hmm. So by alternating what intentionally, you can create a lot of expansion and a lot more um, variety of pleasure, just understanding even how a woman can angle herself to get that or how uh, a male partner can angle um, himself to stimulate that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And do you find that there is a, um, uh, that there is a variation of speed component that helps, helps really, you know, uh, expand and extend your awareness around, you know, certain kinds of stimulation? So to the beginning which is a permission-based um, contact. So in the very beginning, when before you bring those genitals together, there needs to be a sense of permission. Mm. It's really missing. Mm. So when permission, it sounds r ridiculous, but when permission is given, something in the psyche shifts and the um, body starts to respond differently now. And you're so talking, the, you're talking beyond just consent, like, may I enter you now? Or is that, is that a part of it? It's like, if there's a full bodied permission or a heart yeah, it, permission it, or an energetic permission? It can be any, anything that you sense, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that means to you. But basically having a person ask permission before they enter your body, whether it's a vagina or an anus, mm -hmm. is really important because what it acknowledges is, is, you know, are you ready? Do you really want this? Um, is it a full body consent of yes? Because we can consent verbally, but our bodies don't always yeah. track that. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so right before um, moving, if you bring the genitals together and just breathe, first, it's an extraordinary experience for the energetics yeah. because it really starts to open things yeah. energetically. Yeah. It also yeah. helps to regulate the nervous systems and, and bring them in alignment. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a long pause but a long enough to go i'm here hi uh, hi <laughs> this, remember me yes. or hi nice to meet you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and then uh so then the next piece would be to breathe together mm. and to really allow the receiver to actively draw in the the just use those terms because it can be all kinds of configurations. Mm -hmm, right. um, and that uh, essentially will create a, a whole other level of sensitivity, engorgement, lubrication, arousal that isn't there if you're just pushing into someone immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love this concept of inviting in, right? I mean, that, that could be also energetic, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just physical, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you're, you know, part of the, the polarity that I teach is that the, the feminine, whoever, which gender is not important in this one, but the feminine partner is inviting in, right? The consciousness, um, 
you know, the depth, the, the masculine partner into every cell, into the heart, into, yes. you know, not just physically, but emotionally, energetically. Yes. And that, 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 that invitation, um, you know, has to be very intentional and very conscious. And I love that you're, you're actually tying that to the physical aspect of inviting, because we tend to think of penetration as sort of a pushing into yes. versus an inviting in. And I think that's such a beautiful distinction. Yes. Yeah. So one of the interesting things that I read along in Chinese medicine, Tao studies, was that there's a thing of a small fire and a big fire when it comes to sex and arousal. The small fire is adrenals. So mm. you're really reliant on hormonal charge mm. to get aroused and to last. The big fire is the heart. Mm -hmm. And so when the heart opens in both people, um, what happens is something very different. Now you're fueled differently. Right. You can have relaxed arousal. And mm -hmm. so this can lead into a multitude of different experiences. It could be very primal. It could also be soft and subtle and sublime and everything in between. Mm -hmm. It just allows a spectrum of expression to be more readily available than if we're reliant on friction sex and rapidly just trying to quickly keep the arousal and, and, and deal with it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's um, a very important idea because in modern people, the way that we do transactional sex is we don't tend to want to open our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I have many women come to me in my community like, how can I have like a one-time experience but then not have obsession? stuck on this person and i'm like well it may, you may not be the kind of person that can do that so you have to actually be honest with yourself are you extremely romantic because if you are it means every person you meet you're going to think they're your life partner even if all they do is say hello mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. never mind being sexual yeah. so this ability to uh understand how to open your heart even in a situation that could be like a one night stand, but you make that experience with this individual. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an is, that is going to be a profound and sacred expression. You choose that. Yeah. Maybe those are not your words, but you're like, this is going to be an amazing expression or extraordinary, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you choose intentionally, I'm going to bring all of myself to this, but I'm not going to attach meaning to it. Mm. It's, it's or a expectation. Very, or, exactly. or expectation or demand or covert yes. contract or all of those things that we do as humans. <laughs> yes. And this isn't just wisdom for singles having one night stand. This is wisdom for long term couples too. Mm -hmm. You taking that they're always going to be available, that they're hours, that they're this, that uh no. But if you can set a container of like this is now, we're going to have this experience and it's going to be this and I'm going to give all myself to it no matter, and, and I'm not going to assign meaning or expectation that we do it again, or, but I'm just going to have this experience. I'm going to bring all of that. Mm. It really changes things because um, Eros likes novelty. It wants something fresh. That doesn't mean a new partner every day. Right. It means bring your innocence, bring your joy, bring your creativity, not just, oh yeah, here's the same routine again. It's eros to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. No, no, it, 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 erotic tension is needed, right? Yes. Right. And, Absolutely. And, and that's that's part of how we that's part of how we learn to get turned on. So I would say so, that's the third piece because you'd ask like, what are the three pieces? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. ho home base, uh, slowing mm -hmm. down with permission, mm -hmm. and then erotic tension, mm -hmm. and being a lover of mm -hmm. it and being a mm -hmm. cultivator of it and gathering as much of it as you can every day in all your situations mm -hmm. and then choose you would share the abundance of what you've collected let's say in in your day mm -hmm. I, I, so just just to unpack the erotic tension piece because i think that's something that that um a lot of people aren't thinking about right how do you, because it's, it's because it's tension, right? It creates, it's, you know, it takes something for us to take something for our nervous systems to hold the tension yes. of desire yes. without pouncing <laughs> it, <laughs> is how I like to see it. it. Yeah, right? that, I love it. <laughs> yes. So here's the thing. This is a, a lifelong journey. 
Yeah. And so wherever you are, you, that's where we are today, and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And as you start to explore and deepen your mm, understanding of what's possible for you erotically, mm -hmm. then it's erotic tension needs to be part of that exploration. And to start to understand that your nervous system, as it is today, doesn't actually have the capacity to hold a lot of erotic tension. Mm -hmm. However, you mm -hmm. can strengthen it and create a much more robust system fairly quickly right. simply by what i just said so your energy you're grateful for it you breathe it everywhere into your body when you move on you've just exercised and strengthened that nervous system that pleasure those pleasure pathways as oh we can feel this and we don't have to discharge instantly yeah and that's yeah. essentially the flex can you feel arousal, own it fully as yours, not have to necessarily do anything about it, enjoy it. And then maybe you have to move your body because it's a lot and you might have to exercise or dance or like, bah, like say right. something. Right. Uh, right. But at some point you will find your capacity more and more and more to the point where you could experience extreme arousal and really enjoy the electricity from that and then still be at choice rather than feeling like you have to discharge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, <clears throat> I think one of the things that I've, I've found that's really helpful for people is to, we can, you can touch your partner sexually, you can touch them erotically and take your, your sweet ass time in doing it, right? You can take 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, just, mm -hmm. uh, just touching them, right? And, and let their nervous system wake up to the amount of energy that that's create, that, that creates before, you know, entering into something, before, you know, there's any penetration. And I think one of the things that I would love to see couples commit to are, is the practice of, you know, sort of the goalless practice. Like there's no, there's no, no, no finish needed and, you know, no goal, there's no orgasm to go for. Yes. It's really about, yeah, it's really about how close can we get you know how deeply can we feel each other how um how expansive can our nervous systems get how much pleasure can we conduct through our bodies right and and that's a training it's a People training don't realize like it's a fucking it's a, training like it's martial arts yeah yeah it's a yeah. training absolutely yeah. I mean, I've been a li lifelong practitioner. Uh, my mother said I started masturbating probably in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm still learning and growing mm -hmm. every day. I'm still mm -hmm. learning and growing mm -hmm. every day. So it's, it's something beautiful because we can make it, I mean, who doesn't want more turn on and fun for the whole yeah. of their life? Yeah. This is a, there's a longevity in that. Um, with um, some of the newer research that came out of Canada, uh, around sexual couples that are very having magnificent sex is that uh, younger couples are actually have a harder time having amazing sex and as you age and so some of the couples tested or like part of the research were in their 80s and were having extraordinary sex and they were saying actually sex just keeps getting better and better and better and better when yeah. the couple is invested in making that a, an important part of their life yeah. And it's not yeah. what we think. It's not fancy techniques. It's not having ripped abs. It's not having. It's really like, how deeply can you meet the mystery of the moment? How can you offer yourself fully? Mm -hmm. How can you sense mm -hmm. into and be creative and, and follow pleasure like as it arises in you, as you feel it arising in the other? And that skill set of listening and following and expressing, it's, it's not in our vernacular, no. right? No, and yet no. it's the thing that naturally comes to some people because obviously the researchers had access to a sufficient amount of <laughs> couples mm -hmm. who are having great sex. Mm -hmm. But it's something they learned, you know, over many decades. So we need to also clear the misnomer that we have to look a particular way or be a particular age or have a particular type of relationship in order to access uh, depth and mm. beauty and that's not true because you could be a solo i have john in my own solo practice had pleasure so extraordinary almost one time thought was going to die from it like mm. i was like wow I, I have to stop mm. and another time it was so 